Hello and welcome back to the Yellow Chair Classroom. Here today we are going to continue with the second part of the Wishing Horse Rides again. Very interesting. You will have to note down all the morals and adapt it. Come on children, let's go to the story. A few days after this, they came to a prosperous town and in the middle of it, they found a magnificent mansion. Obviously, it belonged to a very rich family indeed. Lolling in a chair at the gate of this mansion was a very bored looking boy. He was dressed in the most expensive clothes that money could buy. Hey you, said the boy rudely. Albert and the old man came to a halt. I see you grant wishes. Well, you are going to grant my wish right now, said the boy. In fact, I'll buy 50 wishes because 99 gold pieces is nothing to me. My father's the wealthiest man in the whole country. So there, I'm sorry, but you can have just a single wish, replied the old man. You see, Albert has only enough magic power in him to grant one wish at a time then he has to have a rest to recharge his magic batteries. Isn't that right, Albert? And Albert said, Nee! Stupid horse! Stupid old man! Right, now let's get on with it. And the boy clicked his fingers for one of the servants to pay over the gold pieces. I wish to own all the games in the world, now, this minute. So the old man whispered in Albert's ear, and Albert said, Nay, there was a flare of lightning and scattered all over the mansion's wide gardens. There was everything you would need to play football or netball, Tennis, chess, badminton, snooker, baseball, fencing, monopoly, cricket. Cards, draughts, basketball, table tennis, darts, ice hockey, snakes and ladders, boxing billiards and a hundred other games. And all this equipment was brand new, still in its packing. Wow, all mine? said the boy and ran around tearing the packaging open and scattering it to blow across the gardens where the many servants had to chase it and pick it all up. When he had opened about 50 packages, a nasty suspicion suddenly came to him. Hear you old man, I can't play any of these games on my own, can I? No, said the old man. You will have to find somebody else to play them with you. Somebody else? Yes, you know, share them so we can both have some fun. Share? What's that share? Asked the boy, both puzzled and angry. I'm afraid we have to leave you to find out, said the old man. And he and Albert journeyed towards leaving the rich boy in a perfect rage. Sometime later, they came across a girl running along the road and looking very unhappy indeed. Whatever is wrong? The old man asked her. Oh, it's my grandfather. He is very ill. A tree fell on him in the forest and broke both his legs. He is in terrible pain. <laughs> I just run to fetch the doctor, but he refuses to come. Why not? Because he says we haven't enough money to pay him and it's true. <laughs> we are very poor. Oh, I do wish I could help Granddad. <laughs> and she began to cry. Well, we grant wishes, don't we, Albert? said the old man. Hey, said Albert. The girl read the notice on the side of the cart. But I haven't got 99 gold pieces. 
all I have is the five pieces I offered the doctor. Mm -hmm. Said the old man. What would you wish for if you could wish for anything in the whole world? Money, jewels, land, power and beauty. Certainly not. All I'd wish is that my poor granddad would be well again. The old man turned to Albert. We don't usually do things for free, do we? But on this occasion, what about making an exception? Yee, yee, said Albert. So the old man whispered in Albert's ear. There was a flicker of lightning and round the bend in the road came an elderly man. But he was skipping and dancing and waving to the girl as he approached. Just look what happened, my dear. I was in such pain and then suddenly my legs were healed and now they are stronger than they ever were. He gave a great leap in the air and it twirled around like a ballet dancer. Oh, thank you, thank you, laughed the girl and gave the old man a hug and Albert a kiss on his hairy nose. Her granddad thanked them profusely too and the pair went skipping off laughing and hand in hand well we didn't make any money but i think we might have a satisfied customer there albert and albert said yay by this time many days had passed and albert and the old man had traveled right across the land before crossing the border in search of new customers in the next country, they decided to spend the night at a simple inn. After dinner, they were resting under a tree in the garden of the inn when they heard a growly voice, gradually getting louder and nearer. And then that bone you gave me had hardly any meat on it. And anyway, I never see you eating a scraggy bone. You just have the meat. And while we're about it, why do I always have water to drink? Why can't I have beer like you do? And another thing, that stupid Eve Emily is getting on my nerves as well as. It was the shepherd and his talking dog. Please, oh please, said the shepherd to the old man. Will you shut this dog up? He's never stopped complaining since you granted my wish. Now you know what I had to put up with you for years, growled the dog. I'll never complain again, promised the shepherd. If only you'll take his voice away forever, I wouldn't mind at all, so long as the old mourners learnt his lesson agreed the dog. The old man Albert turned to Albert. A dissatisfied customer Albert, do you think this is a case for giving his money back? And Albert said, yay. So the old man returned the gold pieces to the shepherd and whispered in Albert's ear, there was a streak of lightning. And the dog said, woof. Woof. The shepherd looked very relieved, expressed his thanks and went on his way, the now silent but tail wagging dog at his heels. Soon after this, the lady who used to live in one tiny room appeared, looking very upset and being comforted by the kind neighbor who had lent her the money for her wish. Oh, please make the hundred room palace disappear and all the hundred servants with it, she wailed. Oh, deary me, said the old man, whatever went wrong? Well, you gave me a hundred rooms, all right, but they were all empty. All I had to put in them was one cup, one stool and one bed. But what about the servants? asked the old man. 
couldn't you tell them to get you some extra furniture? Somehow, they didn't seem to like me ordering them around. And as soon as they saw how little I actually owned, they refused to do any work at all until they had been paid their wages. I didn't have any money. So they all walked out and left me alone in my hundred empty rooms. I've never been so miserable in my life and I want to go back to my little house again. It was single but it was mine and I could afford it. Oh you poor thing, said her kind neighbor giving her a hug. I'm sorry I've been so proud and rude to you before dear. But I see now you were my real and only friend and she hugged the neighbor back. Another dissatisfied customer, Albert, said the old man. Do you think she deserves her money back? And Albert said, Nay. Ah yes, I was forgetting it wasn't her money but her generous neighbors. He then placed the money safely in the neighbor's hands. The old man whispered in Albert's ear, There was a flare of lightning and... Over the horizon, in the direction of the woman's home, there was a great rumble. The old man assured her that when she got back, she would find that hundred room palace and the hundred servants had disappeared and that her own one room little house would be there where it had always been and in it would be one cup, one stool and one bed. She was overjoyed, thanked them profusely and set off home immediately arm in arm with the one true friend she had. They decided they were going to work hard together at growing vegetables and fruit for the market. Soon after this, the golfer appeared, still carrying his golf bag. But now it only contained one club. He was looking very glum indeed. Well, are you still enjoying your game? asked the old man. Oh, I play perfectly, the golfer admitted. I win every game I play nowadays. So why are you looking so fed up? Because every single time I hit the ball, it always goes in the hole, no matter which way I face or what club I use or what distance it is, I always get the ball down the hole in just one stroke. Ways? Asked the old man. Always. I've tried hitting the ball with an umbrella, a spade, a stick of a rhubarb, even with my friend's wooden leg. And every time I go round the hole, 18 holes, in just 18 strokes. But isn't that good? Asked the old man. It's too good because nobody will play with me anymore. And to be honest, it's very boring being perfect and having nothing to improve on or practice. If you can't take my wish away, I shall never play golf again. Oh dear Albert, another dissatisfied customer, should we refund his money? And Albert said, yay. The old man returned the 99 gold pieces and whispered in Albert's ear. And Albert said, Nay, there was a blaze of lightning and the golfer put down a golf ball, took out his one club and missed it completely four times in a row. Finally, he did hit the ball, but it smashed the window of the inn and he had to pay the furious landlord for its repair. However, he was smiling and swearing again and after shaking hands with the old man and patting Albert in gratitude, he went off a happier man. Now he was no longer perfect, he was determined to practice his golf until he improved. 
Soon, a great old limousine came thundering up. The door slammed open and the rich boy bounced out, red in the face with fury. Hey you! he shouted. Are you addressing Albert and me? said the old man calmly. Yes, you. Remember all those stupid games you left with me? The ones you wished for, of course, we remember. Well, I found I couldn't play any of them on my own. I needed to... Oh, what's that word you used? Share? Share them with one or more other kids? Yes, said the old man. And Albert said, nay. Well, I sent the servants out to round up 50 poor kids and bring them in. And I said things like, hey you, play football with me this minute. Or, hey you, play dominoes with me now. And do you know what they all said? No, said the old man. And Albert said, nay. The boy stamped his foot. Every single one of them said, Push off, you rude little brat. The old man nodded, and I'm going to say the same. Push off, you rude little brat. And Albert said, Yay, yay. What? The boy was absolutely purple in the face with rage, but there was nothing he could do about it nor did he get his money back. The old man whispered in Albert's ear and Albert said, Yay! There was a zip of lightning and... Back at the boy's mansion, all the games disappeared and reappeared on the back doorsteps of the 50 poor children whom the rich boy had ordered to play with him. The rich boy got back into his limousine looking thoughtful. Perhaps he was thinking he ought to try this sharing idea after all and see if anyone would be his friend. Finally, the girl and her grandfather reappeared, both smiling. We have come to say thank you once more, they both said. We'd also like to give you a present for helping us. So here is a sack of oats and a bag of apples for Albert and here are some of our homemade cheese, butter and bread for you, sir. The old man and Albert were very pleased with their gifts and put them away in the cart to eat on their journey. Then they crossed the border into the next land where there were a few more people who still needed to learn how to say thank you and to use their wishes properly. We'll meet you in another short time with another entertaining story or a sweet time. Please subscribe, share and like and do comment. Thank you.